So you've been invited to a party, a business networking event, or some kind of social gathering, and you want to make the most of that event because you know how much trouble it is to go to events and stuff. But you want to make the most of that event. This one thing will help you connect with more people, create awesome results for your time, and make that event more interesting. I'm Justin Hit with Inside Strategic Relations. Building business relationships matters. Now, in an instant digital world of text messages and social media, business owners and executives feel more disconnected than ever before. Uh, Ever since COVID, there haven't been a lot of business networking events or there haven't been a lot of association meetings or or on-site training that really felt the way it used to. Because remember the day when you'd go... You'd go to work, and then after work, you'd go to a business networking event. You'd pick up two or three new clients. You'd make two or three new solid connections, and it would build your business. Now, today, everybody's hanging out on the Facebook, LinkedIn, or some other platform. Uh, These platforms may not even exist at the time of you listening to this recording because the digital environment for networking is so weak. So how do we build strong connections and get into the inner circles of decision makers so that we can offer our solutions so that we can make better and more profitable business connections. Well, first off, you have to get invited to the parties, to the events, to the fundraisers, to the activities where decision makers exist. Because when I share this particular strategy with you, a lot of folks are going to th- think it takes a lot of time and, 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 and it's costly and it requires a lot of pre-planning. But again, aren't business relationships worth the investment in order to build their quality? So a lot of folks go to these meetings and they have a little bit of anxiety about being face-to-face in, in person. So whether it's a, a Toastmasters event because you're, you're building skills, so you're going to training to build your skills, it's great to know other people who are also building the same skills so you can build up a uh, reinforcing behaviors or study behaviors. Maybe you're going to a charitable event where they're raising money for a worthy cause and you want to see that cause be successful and you want to see that foundation grow or you want to see that that organization that's it's helping children grow and so you want to make sure because those are like-minded people that they know you're interested and maybe there's a tax opportunity for you for you not now but in the future and you, and this gives you the ability to have that channel maybe it's a business networking event where you're in a city and you're socializing because you're really looking for clients how do you be more effective and not just work the room but build meaningful relationships. And a lot of times when you're at those meetings, you cannot afford to sit there and talk to one person the whole night. I know you're nervous. I know you're, you're, you're not sure how to approach it, but you need to, you need to pollinate. You need to uh, circulate uh, so that you can get uh, as many, not necessarily meaningful connections, but introductions for new opportunity. Plus, you need to be introducing other people. And so these connections. So how do we secure these things after the meeting since we really couldn't invest a lot of time and effort during the meeting to make these connections? Well, I'm going to recommend something that has been quite the social norm until about the 1980s or maybe the 1990s and fell out of favor as postage rates increased. Yet I still see highly successful individuals use this because it turns a limited connection into a meaningful connection. And let me explain. Let's say you met somebody at a party only for five minutes. You exchanged business cards. You talked back and forth about the products and services that you offer. You had a conversation about the weather. You you felt maybe there's a little bit of opportunity here, but you didn't really get to know the person. How do you make a connection? How do you anchor your who you are with that person after the, the event? Because you know, after an event, uh, I came back from a fundraising event yesterday and I laid down on my bed and I was half dressed. I am pretty sure my pants were around my ankles, and I was half dressed because uh, I woke up and my pants were on the floor. I didn't even drink at the event or anything, but it was so exciting. And I came back and I took a three-hour nap. Okay, I think I ate a little bit too much food, but it was a great event. But that's how everybody is after an event. It is socially draining today to be at events and connect with new people and meet new people, and and so there's got to be something to anchor that experience so that post event you're still memorable well the thank you note is a way to do this 
Now, before you shy away, because that means you might have to buy cards and you might have to take out a pen and you might have to write something. And then there's a little bit of organization. We'll talk about these things to make it easier for you. Um, But it used to be customary to send thank you notes after any any interaction or engagement. Get an old um, Tom Hopkins book and he talks about all the different types of thank you notes for all kinds of social occasions and sales occasions and and after an appointment. Well, an event is literally an appointment. And in the difference is though you might connect with many people, how do we maintain or build those connections so that we don't lose the value of the networking event? And again, the the thank you note does two very important things. Number 1, it creates a reminder of the event so post event they get this card maybe two or three days later because i'm not talking about sending a thank you email see email is just an email it doesn't take any effort i'm talking about sending a thank you card a physical thank you card and so a few days after the event it shows up and this person who's completely forgot about you because you made no meaningful impression on them and that's okay that's the way it works sometimes now says oh I remember this person, this person I talked to about such and such a conversation. And we're not going to go into what you write in a thank you note. I cover that in another program. Uh, I think the program is called Instant Thank You Notes for Salespeople. But it doesn't matter if you're the business owner, you're an executive, you're a salesperson, you're trying to raise money for a nonprofit. A thank you note creates a meaningful post-event connection that reminds the person about who you are. It shows some courtesy. It connects you in a meaningful way. It's a physical and tangible element. And it is further the, furthering the connection. Do you see how that works? Now, number two, a, a thank you note would be sent to the hosts and important people in that network to provide a connection that increases the chance you get invited on the primary invite list. So here's something that a lot of folks will come to be. They'll say, look, I never get invited to anything. I don't get to go to these big networking events. I don't get, I'm not a guest. Well, maybe you haven't shown appreciation and helped spark that connection of value. Maybe you haven't got out your checkbook and contributed to these organizations that are having events. But long story short, a thank you note also uh, shows the host that you appreciate that the event even existed. Because a lot of folks are questioning whether we should have physical events. We can get in some virtual space or we can talk on Slack or text message each other back or open a Zoom call, right? A lot of people don't want to have physical events because a physical event requires a lot of investment. But again, that investment demonstrates quality. That investment slows down the quantity of meetings, And then ultimately provides a better opportunity for connections. So this once lost thing is of writing thank you notes. You don't even have to be very good at it because so few people do it. But it carries over the connection post event. Now I'm being a little dramatic. I, you know, I wasn't in my underwear, half naked on my bed, passed out. I was just a little tired because it's it's draining for me to be in social environments and interact with people. I don't I don't do that very well. And I resist that being there, but I you know, once I understood that everybody's there like honeybees. They're moving from flower to flower, table to table, they're making new introductions. Half the introductions you make are not worth having. But for those interactions, especially whoever invited you to the event or those key people who sat at your table or the one or two people you had a great conversation with, why not follow up? Why not follow up? Now, again, a thank you note is not, hey, it was nice to meet you at the event, buy my product. It's the beginning of an interaction. It gives an anchor to the other person that you actually existed at the event. Think about the last event you went to. How many hundreds of people were there? And of those people, how many did you meet? How many could have introduced you to more people? How many could have connected you in a meaningful way? But you haven't followed up with any of these folks to even be remembered. Because as you don't remember all the people you chatted with at an event, and you might have problems matching faces with, with, with businesses or what they're doing in life, or, or even demonstrated a lot of interest in other people at the event. You might have been just going out there and pitching people, 
which is a, it's just a no-no. You can start the relationship with a mild connection or, or a weak connection with the continuation being used in the thank you note. Now, the, uh, what I would do, and I'll just tell you what I do most of the time, and, and I don't do it all the time, but ultimately, uh, when I go to an event and I meet people, whether or not there's a business opportunity there, because a lot of times I'm going to charitable events, I'm going to fraternal events, I'm going to educational and training events, I do go through each day at the end of the day and make a list of all the people I met. Now, this might be creepy for some people, okay? But if I met somebody who's interesting, I might want to meet them again or, or learn more. This isn't just writing down the list of all the hot chicks. This is making a list of all the people you met who potentially were interesting or potentially had opportunity for your business or potentially you could serve them and help them solve problems. But the five seconds you met them and shook hands you're not going to remember their names. So as a mnemonic, so I can remember names, so the next day I show up at the event, if I'm at a a multi-week conference, I have written down who I met that day, I try to build a little association, and then the next day when I meet them, I might actually remember their name, and that's they like that. That's meaningful to them. Now, I'll take that list and send it to my assistant, Because I may not have their postal address, I may not have their email address, I may not have their phone number, and they may not have wanted to give it to me because they might be afraid that they were going to get pitched. Have you ever seen that? But I have my assistant research those things, and then I'll send a handwritten thank you note, of which many times I'll write that evening, because I'm not, you know, after the event, I'm tired. You know, if you've been on your feet all day at a trade show, end of the day, you're tired. You don't want to be running around doing extra stuff. You want to be solidifying the relationships that you made, uh, extending the connections, matching, matchmaking is very important. We talk about that in the more advanced programs. But my assistant would end up getting all the, uh, the information we need in our customer relationship management system. And in some cases, I know I, I should write handwritten thank you notes to everybody, but when course of a week, you meet a hundred people, um, my assistant will also send out some emails for me. Uh, so if I prom- so for example, you've met somebody and you said, look, I- I've got information about what you're looking for. When I get back to the office, I'll send it to you. Well, if at the end of the day you made your list and you made a note that you're going to send that information, then you-, you don't forget when you get back to the office because that person had met you and found a solution. And, and if you don't do all the work to follow up, then nothing's going to happen. But again, when that thank you note comes, the physical thank you note, it's a special way to show that you take the time to care, you took the time to listen, and ultimately make connections. So those individuals are more likely to open doors for you. They're more likely to follow up. I know that anybody I've gotten a handwritten thank you note from has been like a list. You know, I move them right up the list. If I've hosted a party or a network event and I get a handwritten thank you note, I don't care if that person was on a primary invite or a secondary invite or a tertiary invite or a plus one. That person starts, I I learn a little bit more about that person and they move up to a list, especially if they've contributed to the nonprofit or the political campaign or whatever that is. But again, the thank you note demonstrates gratitude, attention, and it's a positive reinforcement that significantly adds to you even existing in the minds of your prospects after events. It helps you connect in social circles because now they have your contact information. It helps you establish value in the relationship. Even if you're just a little bit stroking the ego of the host by saying, hey, thank you so much. I got invited by so-and-so and I went to your event and here are the two things that were really enjoyable. Thank you for having me. Even because these events are not easy to put on. But again, positive reinforcement demonstration of gratitude and it brings you to the attention of decision makers now there's more advanced techniques that we could talk about in coaching members of the website uh, you know inside strategic relations those who are members of that program we could go down and and what what do you put on it on a thank you note we can talk about uh, different ways that you can use other things than thank you notes because remember everybody's at the event they had a five-hour flight with a two-hour layover they aren't going to remember who they met so again what do we do while we're at the event 
But ultimately, how do we uh, anchor and seed ideas into those individuals so that their weak memories are in, in highlighting who you are and what you can do for them rather than that awkward connection you had because you were nervous and you, you, know, you, you spilled your drink on yourself and you look like an idiot. They don't remember any of that stuff. But again, we can shape memories, we can set up the appointments, we can do the follow-up, but that thank you, it doesn't stop with that thank you note. Now we can put them into our prospect newsletter if that's appropriate. We can put them into a follow-up campaign. A good friend of mine uh, does a quarterly follow-up on individuals that meet his list. We can start working on uh, spheres of influence. Um, there's a lot of value in this. But again, if you don't send that old-fashioned thank you note... And all you do is text message him. Hey, hey, Jim, cool to be at such and such event. Thanks for inviting me, dude. Then you don't get any results. So if you want to build better business relationships, more profitable business relationships, relationships that upgrade your opportunity, that take you to the next level, then why not consider sending a thank you note? If you'd like details or even coaching on how you can make this a regular thing that your salespeople do, because this connection this relationship builds results, then contact us at the office. Visit www.insidestrategicrelations.com. Go to the contact page, and I, Justin Hitz, will actually answer your questions either in another podcast, uh, but we always answer them directly. Because you may not have known that thank you notes, handwritten thank you notes, was anything other than what kids send after they get Christmas presents. Uh, and, uh, and this is an opportunity here. Thank you notes done the right way. Reestablish a physical connection between people. It puts you on someone's radar. It reinforces the connections from a even a, an, a you know a five minute handshake or a two minute introduction, and then ultimately unlocks some of these other more advanced techniques that uh, presidents use, that high net worth individuals use, and that ultimately produce the outcomes and results that you're looking for. Again, I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. We have a free newsletter at www.insidestrategicrelations.com. My gift to you. We also had have a, a, a private membership program, courses, and an additional podcast archive. So I want to thank you for being a part of what we're doing here. I hope it's making a big difference when you implement these ideas at a thank you note so easy to get start, yet so few will do it. Test it for yourself for 30 days. Thanks for listening. I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations.